16 grisly facts about Vlad the Impaler and his brutal war. Tactics, Vlad the Impaler. Even his name sounds downright sinister. As one of the most reviled figures in history, he is remembered as a bloodthirsty tyrant. His love of impaling people has earned him a dark place in the public's imagination. Claims that he was the real-life inspiration for Bram Stoker's Count Dracula, the undead nobleman who, like Vlad, loved to poke holes in people, heavenly added to the fascination. But who was Vlad the Impaler, really? One of the cruelest rulers in history, he was born around 1430 as a prince in Wallachia, a principality in what is today Romania. Vlad Tepes came of age in a turbulent time. The aggressive, expanding Ottoman Empire was setting its sight on Eastern Europe after successfully conquering Constantinople in 1453. Vlad, a young ruler struggling to simply hold on to the throne Heinherited, was thrust into the role of defender of his lands against the aggression of a much bigger army. He also had enemies closer to home and even went into conflict against Saxons. Though this may sound like a feel-good underdog story, Vlad's tactics made it a darker, more complicated one. Whether or not totally true, however, Vlad's bloody acts contributed to the legend of the Impaler and cast a dark shadow even to this day. As a result of the conflict between the Ottoman Empire and Vlad's home of Wallachia, the teenage prince and his younger brother Radu were taken by Sultan Murad II as hostages. With his new rule came a new form of frenzied bloodlust. Most of his atrocities date from this period. According to accounts, no less than 20,000 prisoners of war had been impaled, their bodies decaying on the pikes. Whether or not 20,000 people were actually impaled remains debatable. But Vlad nonetheless built a chilling reputation for using gruesome war tactics. Impaling human beings on huge pikes wasn't just to punish them. Vlad knew the horrific spectacle had other uses. Part of the reason Vlad impaled people was so that it would put the fear of God into spectators. Impalement was used as a deterrent. Well, deterrent might be too light a word for it. Some claim that Vlad's use of impalement was actually an early form of terrorism. Perhaps one of the cruelest stories in the vast repertoire of Vlad the Impalatalas involves his biggest enemies, the Ottomans. The Sultan had sent a group of his men to meet with Vlad. When they were presented to the ruler of Wallachia, they did not remove their turbans. It was nothing personal, they claimed, just a religious custom. Vlad was not pleased. He declared he would help them keep their turbans secure, and he did so by nailing them to their heads. The name Dracula, perhaps the most infamous vampire name in popular imagination, may come directly from Vlad himself. His father was a member of the Order of the Dragon, an organization dedicated to destroying the Ottomans. He went by the nickname Vlad Dracul, or Vlad the Dragon. His son inherited the pension for dragon names, and so signed his name Vlad Draculia, or Son of the Dragon. Whether or not Bram Stoker actually transformed Draculia into Dracula for his famous novel remains a hotly contested issue.